Okay, so now our first lesson in Linux terminology is going to be navigating the file system. So if you're a Windows user, you're used to navigating your file system probably through folders, through a GUI, so a graphical user interface. Well, in Linux, we can do that, but the majority of time we're going to live in this terminal here. So we really need to know how to get around. So the first thing we can do here is we can say, hey, where are we at? And that's PWD. So that stands for present working directory. So you type that in, you hit enter, and it says, okay, we're in the root folder. So we know that we're in the root folder, but how do we get out of the root folder? We can use a command called CD, and that stands for change directory. So if we want to change directory backwards, we just type in two dots here. And now we can say, okay, where are we at? So we're in a slash. So we're just in a home folder here, or just a, our generic slash folder, right? So what we can do is, well, how do we know? Can we go backwards from here? Let's keep trying. So we do PWD again. No, we can't. This is our base folder, right? So you have to think of this as the, the lowest you can go. So now how do we move around? How do we know how to go forwards again? Well, we don't know what's in our directories, right? So we're sitting in this, this slash folder, and how do we look around? So there's a command called ls that lists everything that's in the folder. So if we say ls, we kind of see this color coordinated here. And the color coordination, it just depends on if it's a folder, if the folders read right, you know, there's permission settings, which we're going to get into later. But the majority of these here are folders. Okay, well, we know we just came out of root, so we can go back into root. Now, how do we do that? So we can say change directory root, and we can actually hit tab to autocomplete. I don't know if you caught that, but there's no R, any folder besides root. So at R, I can just hit tab and it should type it out for me. Oh, I lied. There is a run in here somewhere, but it's hidden. We're going to cover that soon as well. So RO, hit tab, autocomplete, can change directory into root. So let's ls and root and see what's in here. Okay, this is more like our home folder, right? So we've got desktop, documents, downloads. This is kind of what applies to the root user. So what if we're sitting in this root folder here and we wanted to access instead this Etsy folder? Well, could we do the same Etsy command here? Well, I'm hitting tab and nothing's happening. Well, because Etsy doesn't belong in this area, right? But if we put a forward slash in front of it, because this is the base, and then we hit Etsy there, now we can navigate to the Etsy folder. And we can actually double tab and see what's all in the Etsy folder, like an LS, say no. Um, another way to do that is if we wanted to LS what's in the Etsy folder without navigating to it, we could just type LS Etsy, and you can see everything that's in here. So there's some, some tricks that we can do, right? So we don't have to actually navigate to the folder to know what's in there. Again, if we LS and we want to know what's sitting in videos or even let's say what's sitting in desktop for our folder. Well, if we start typing desktop and hit tab, we can't do that either because everything in Linux is case sensitive. So if we start typing desktop and then hit tab now, we can LS and see what's in there. So our VMware came with a couple of shell scripts here that are automatically placed on our desktop. If we wanted to confirm that, you could see that they're both right here. So as of right now, we are just sitting in our root home folder and we know how to navigate around. So if we wanted to go to desktop, we could. We could hit LS now and see what's in there. If we wanted to go backwards, we could. Okay, now we're back in our our root folder, and you can also tell where you're at. Your present working directory sits right here, right? So this little Atilda is actually your home folder, and you can see that we're in desktop. So if we wanted to go back into our desktop, instead of typing, say you wanted to go to music from your desktop, instead of going root music, which will work, 
you could also just say, I want to go music. And that'll put you there as well. And notice you don't need the leading forward slash when you use the Atilda. So just some couple interesting tricks that you'll kind of pick up along the way. Um, tab is definitely going to be your best friend. If you run into something with multiple options, say you're trying to CD and you say, I want to go to my desktop and you're tabbing, and it's not working. You can hit double tab and then it'll show you, okay, well, there's desktop documents, downloads. Those are your three options that start with a D. So now you kind of have an idea as to how to kind of move around, but let's, um, do a little bit more. So what if we want to make our own folder? Well, there's something called make directory, MKDIR. So if we say make directory, we'll say, I'm just going to use my name, Heath. So now if we LS, we can see that this Heath folder is now here. We can go into the Heath folder and there should be nothing in it, right? So we can go back and we can also get rid of the Heath folder, remove directory Heath. If we LS again, it's gone. So now what else can we do? Well, we can also look for hidden folders. So we can say ls-la and we can look for hidden files and folders here. Remember the color coordination. So this dot cache, right? That in theory is a hidden folder. So if we say cd dot cache, we can go into there. We ls and there's actually some, some information in there. But when you saw it originally, you didn't see that. We're going to cover more on this. I just kind of want to show you that trick. As you see over on the left side, there's file permissions and properties. So be aware that just because it looks like something's not there doesn't mean it's not there. It might just actually be hidden, similar to Windows where you have hidden files and folders. So just a quick trick to show you that. So another thing we can do. So let's go back. And don't worry about what I'm doing here. You're going to cover these commands in a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to echo hi, and we're going to put that in a test.txt folder. So now if we ls, you can see that test.txt is here. So if we want to actually copy this file, we can copy this file to another location. So we can say, hey, I've got this test.txt but I actually want to move it to downloads. And if we go ls to downloads, you could see that test.txt is actually sitting in there. And if we wanted to remove it, we can just say remove from downloads or test.txt. Actually, sorry, remove downloads test.txt. We don't even have to transition into that directory if we don't want to. So another trick, say we want to see now that it's gone and we want to LS, but we don't want to keep typing this out. If you hit the up arrow, now you can just see your old commands. So if you keep typing a command over and over, you can see what's going on. So LS shows that there's nothing in downloads now. We were able to successfully remove that file. So another thing that we can do is we can actually move. So say we wanted to move test.txt and we wanted to put that into downloads. Okay, now if we ls, test.txt is now gone from this folder because we've moved it. We haven't made a copy. We've actually physically moved it away. So now if we ls, actually let's just tab up, you can see that test.txt is now in there. And I'm going to remove that here. Okay, and now the last thing I want to show you is the locate feature. So if we wanted to locate a file, Say I wanted to locate bash. Let's see. So we're looking for a file and we're going to get more specific along the way. But if you type in locate, you can kind of look through a system to see if you can find it. Now I'm looking for say any type of bin bash or bin r bash. That's fine. That's really what I wanted, but it shows you everything with bash in it. Now this might not work right away. What you might need to do is update the database. So you type in update DB, it updates everything for you, and then you can use locate again. So it has to build that database of the information that it's finding in order to locate uh, what you're searching for. So make sure that you use update DB sort of frequently. 
Okay, so two more things I want to show you and then we'll close out this video and move on to the next one. So an important thing you want to do with your new account is we're using a default password and that's not very secure. So to change a password for our user, we can just type in P-A-S-S-W-D and now it's going to ask us for a new password. So instead of using Tor, we can use something else. I'm going to type in the very secure password as my password for an example here. But if you plan on using this machine for future reference, you can um, type in a secure password and kind of keep it. So lastly, I want to show you is something called man. So man pages. Man pages are your instructions for any command that you're running. Most commands come with a man page. So let's say we want to look at ls. We can say man ls. And then it's going to give us all this information here about ls. So if you see, it says ls is list directory contents. Awesome. And then it gives you what options we can do. Well, we can do a dash a for all, which you saw earlier. And you can kind of scroll through here and just see exactly what it has to offer. And that's kind of it. So when you go through here, um, you can kind of, you know, if you're struggling to, like, you know, there's a command in there, but you're not sure exactly what the command is, you can type in man and search it. And sometimes you can do ls, I don't know if this is going to work, but dash dash help. And you get some information as well. It doesn't provide you the full man pages, but it provides you something pretty close. So that's kind of just your way around if you ever get stuck, something to look for. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Next, we're going to move on to users and privileges, how to add users, and how to, uh, how to change some pseudos and some modifications to our file permissions.